tutorial, we're going to look at how you can change the data that you will have gathered with the rest of the class during the lesson and turn it into a series of graphs that present that data. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, how to then print those graphs off, as well as how to describe the results. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is select the data that you're presenting. So let me just enter some imaginary data into this spreadsheet. Now, your spreadsheet will have uh, the data that was gathered through the class survey. So let's just imagine that um, in the class, 12 students have said that uh, their family are shopping more online in recent years, and that uh, six said that it hasn't really changed, and that two said they actually go into town more often. Now what we want to do is turn this into a graph. So what I suggest you do is I go through each step. You want, probably want to pause this video uh, and then follow the step and then unpause it and then move on to the next part. So step one is to select the data you want to turn into a graph. So the way I did that is I clicked in this top cell here and this will give me the title and I drag down across. So this title here also is highlighted as well as the data and the three categories. What I then do is I go up to this icon and I click insert chart. So what I'd suggest you do is pause it right now and do that bit and then we'll look at the next step. Okay, so a chart will have appeared. Uh, it might be a pie chart. You'll notice a chart editor has appeared over here. Um, and you can change the chart type you might choose. Um, the two typical charts you're going to be using will be pie charts and bar graphs over here. And for this, it doesn't really matter which one you do, but I would probably encourage you to think about using the pie chart. Okay. Now, once you've chosen your actual graph, you're going to want to click on the Customize tab over here in the chart editor, and you're going to want to start to make some changes. So what I'd suggest you do is pause each of these uh, and then maybe explore play, making the changes each in turn to see how your graph is affected. Okay, so the first change is we need to have a look at the chart style. So we can change the background color. We can change the fonts. We can change the chart border if we want. We can make it a 3D chart, uh, or we can maximize it like that. Okay. Uh, and that's really just how you want it to look. So I'm just going to, you might want to play around with that first and then move on to the next thing. Okay, if it's a pie chart, we can choose our pie chart to have a donut like this. We can choose a border color if we want to put a border like that around our pie chart. And that just emphasizes each of the slices. We can put slice labels in if we want. So you see the value now, that that's the 12. Uh, we can put the percentage on, and it's changed to the percentage of people that gave each of these answers. We once again can change the font to something else we want, and we can change text color and some other aspects of our pie chart. So you might want to play around with that. Okay, in the pie slice, we can change our colors of our categories. So I might choose to make this one uh, a very dark color like that. And then I might want to change my second one to make it a lighter color like that. And I might want to make my final one, final slice, a very light color like that. Now that means they're all in the same color range. Or I might want to go for three different slices, three different colors. That's really uh, up to you to decide. You can also change them like that if you want to move one slice out, maybe because you want to emphasize one of your bits of data, like I've just done there. Okay. Right. I'll pause that and try that. Now, the next change is very important because we have a chart title that is not suitable. So this chart is showing us um, the changes in our online shopping behavior. And I've got that title because that's the title here. OK, so I'm going to want to change that. And you'll see on the graph when you change it down here, it's changed up here. OK, I can also change the fonts and uh, the color of my title and all of those small little extra things. And finally, 
I've got to decide on my legend. Do I want a legend? And where do I want it? So I'll just show you what that looks like if I bring a legend in on the right. So instead of having the labels, like I had, I've got none now. Um, I can do that. That's the label this way. Or I can put them as a key like that. And it tells me what each of my colors are. I quite like the look of that, okay, personally. But of course, you will have the way you want to present your data. So what we've now got is a really effective pie chart. Um, clear title that tells us what the pie chart shows, a color for each of the different categories. And I can see that 60%, the most common response was families who've been shopping more in are shopping more online in recent years. Okay. Now, what you're going to want to do is take this along with, I'm just going to close the chart editor by hitting on the X here. If you want to bring the chart editor back at any time, you just double click on a graph and it will automatically bring the chart editor back. You're going to want to turn each of these into graphs. I would strongly recommend the first three are best done as a pie chart or if you find it easier to read and understand um, raw numbers rather than percentages, which is what pie charts show, then bar graphs. The last one, however, is probably best using a bar graph. And the reason for that is if you use a pie chart, you'll end up with lots of slices. And pie charts are most effective when they're only made up of three, four, or maybe five slices at most of the pie. Um, so this last one would be best as a bar graph. Okay. Right, so go ahead and make your four graphs now. And when you've finished your four graphs, come back to the video. Okay, so you've got hopefully four graphs. Now, what you're going to want to do is copy each of these graphs. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can go, you select the graph you want to copy. You can go to edit and copy. Another shortcut is to select the graph and on your keyboard, find the CTRL button, press that down and hit the C key at the same time. And that will automatically copy the graph to your clipboard. You then want to bring it into printing your graph. This is just a blank document where you're going to want to paste your four graphs just before printing them. Okay. So to paste it, there's two options. You can do this way. And it will say link to spreadsheet or paste unlinked. Now, if you keep it there, then any changes you make in the spreadsheet will automatically update in the Google Doc. If you hit this one, any change you make in the spreadsheet will not update. It will be just the one that you've pasted. So I'm going to go do this as paste on link because I don't plan to make any changes in the spreadsheet. So I hit paste and there it is. If I wish to paste it a different way, the shortcut is just to hit the CTRL button on your keyboard again and hit the V key this time. Okay. One final thing is I don't need these graphs to be very big. So I'm just going to shrink this graph down because I want to fit all four onto one page. And I'm going to actually change the zoom size just so I can see my page. There's my page there. I'm going to try to squeeze all of my graphs onto it. I can, if I want, change my uh, page to um, portrait if I wanted to, but I'm, I'm not going to do that um, in this case. But that would be an option if I wanted to do that. Um, right. So we're now ready for printing. So we, we've got four graphs all on this this page or on two pages. And when you're ready to print, to print this on the department printer, you hit the file button and you go down to email and you email this file. Okay, now you start typing L41 which is the printer in Mr. Wiley's Geography Classroom at the back. And you select it, and then you send it. And what that will do is it will send it to the printer, um, and you can just go and pick it up. OK, so that's completing this tutorial. Uh, you now should have four graphs. You want to cut those four graphs out and stick them into your class jotter. Under each graph, you then want to describe what the graph shows. And you want to use data in your description. So I'm going to use this graph as an example. If this was your graph, you would say, this graph shows the changes in the class's online shopping behavior. It shows that the most common change has been that 60% of people are now shopping more online. 
it shows the least common change is that more people are actually shopping in actual shops with only 10%. Now, in that response, I didn't give every single part of the pie. I focused on the most and the least. Um, if you've got four or five slices to your pie, or maybe six or seven bars in a bar chart, you probably want to do more than just the top and the bottom. You might want to do the, the most common two or three and the least common. The other key thing in that description was the fact that I used some data. So I talked about the most common with 60% being the most common. And that's important that my sentence includes that information because it shows that I can read the pie chart. Okay, so use all of these advices to create four graphs and make sure you've written a sentence that outlines what each graph shows and shows that you understand the data that you have gathered and presented.